Hey everyone, Coach Investor back with another Tesla weekly video for today. I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend so far. So we've had another week go by and another indication that again, Tesla is still leading the pack and will be leading the pack for a long, long time, not just because it is executing at a very, very high level, but because the competition can't keep up or rather doesn't want to face the reality that, well, they need to start moving when it comes to Honda, Toyota, and fortunately, we actually see Ford moving in the right direction with their announcements, with their new way of reporting, where you can see the EV segment of the business, how well, or should I say, how bad it is doing today. But again, of course, you can't really compare Ford's EVs to Tesla today. Tesla is making around $10,000 a vehicle or made last year. Ford is losing probably twenty dollars to $30,000 right now. Of course, they're still ramping up this segment, etc. Fair enough. But remember, back when Tesla was losing money, Tesla had to start from scratch. Tesla had to start everything from scratch, supercharger networks, building EVs, factories, etc. Ford, fortunately for them, has already, well, all the extra things that Tesla didn't have. Has the factory, has manufacturing capabilities. Of course, it is a bit different, ICE and EVs, but supercharging network, their cars are compatible with other superchargers out there. So of course, the competition is indirectly helping every other EV maker out there, which is great, which is great for the transformation, the revolution towards a more greener transportation. Now, in this video, we're obviously gonna go over the Tesla numbers out of China, Tesla's domination in Europe as well. Touch on what I just said with regards to Ford and the next project, T3, as well as the chart later on in this video. If you missed last week's video, it will be in the top right corner. If you enjoy this type of videos, do me a solid, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, I would really, really appreciate that. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. So first up, we obviously had the Made in China weekly insured numbers. And again, the trend continues on the upside for the week of 13 to 19 of March. We are now at 18,712. We're probably going to have a record quarter. Now this number, if you divide it between Model Y and Model 3, 12,478 Model Ys, 6,234 Model 3s. And if we go and look at Roland's chart here, you can clearly see again the indication of an uptrend for the last couple of weeks, which is always nice to see. And then for the last week and so of this month, of course, we will probably close at a record quarter if this continues this way. And now we actually got an update here from Roland as well. Today, Tesla, well, today this was March 20, Tesla has overtaken VW, so Volkswagen Group in Europe, in the countries of Spain, Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden combined in Q1 battery electric vehicle deliveries. Continuing here on the good news we've got at the start of the week. So obviously Moody's has officially upgraded Tesla to an investment grade rating for the first time ever before it was in the junk section. So Tesla's rating is now BAA3 from BA1, which is still, in my opinion, not that great, to be honest. We also have more news, good news actually, when it comes to UBS, UBS, Credit Suisse, Remember, if you missed that video, top right corner as well. So Tesla is the number one choice in UBS EV consumer survey. They say here they reaffirmed its buy recommendation and $220 price target for Tesla following the UBS Evidence Lab's seventh wave of EV consumer survey. Tesla is the number one choice for buying an electric vehicle. They surveyed more than 10,000 participants, showed that 46% of consumers are likely to consider buying a battery electric vehicle. This is 3% less than 2022. This is the first time they have recorded a decline in interest since the study began in 2016. Analysts believe that this is driven by European markets on affordability concerns. Again, we've talked about affordability in the past and this is why a Tesla Model 2 is extremely crucial or that model that Volkswagen has announced that will only come out in three years time. 
Now they do say here that Tesla keeps its lead in the brand survey with 42% of BB purchase in tenders considering to buy a Tesla. In China, Tesla lost its top rank for the first time to BYD. Now these two brands lead all others by a wide margin. But we have some more information with regards to China, which is this. Tesla's price war reshuffles Chinese market may wipe out some automakers because China, the automotive industry there is extremely, extremely saturated right now. So don't be surprised if some companies just don't exist anymore or maybe merge together. Now they say here Tesla Inc. triggered a price war in China that's poised to reshape the world's biggest car market with hefty discounts threatening to drive some automakers out of business. And we've seen the effects, right? We've seen that BYD in the last couple of weeks are either in a decline or just staying flat. Now, if you compare it with last quarter, they're obviously down considerably, whereas Tesla has seen the inverse happen. Now, it says here, well, the managing director of GSC Automotive says Tesla created havoc for the rest of the market. Of course, if the rest of the market wants to keep up, they also have to cut prices, but do they have the margins to, well, make this a sustainable business? Not everyone can do this. And talking about incompetency, no Honda EVs for Australia until 2030, despite 30 electric models overseas. Honda Australia says that its first pure EV model is unlikely to reach local shores before the end of the decade. To me, this just doesn't make any sense. By the way, this car <laughs> just looks hideous, but that's a topic for another day. They say here, Australian market not yet ready to cope with EVs, which uh, it's not very, very true. We've seen actually Australia adopt the Tesla Mega Packs, the, well, energy project way before everybody else. So to say they're not ready to cope with EVs, in my opinion, is pretty inaccurate. Honda's Australia chief executive officer and executive director says here, I wouldn't say it's not important for us to get an electric car. When we look at the Australian market's ability to cope with electric, we don't think it's quite here. Hmm. I would say maybe Honda is not capable of launching a new electric vehicle in Australia or making it a successful launch. I think that would be a bit more accurate than to say that Australia is not ready to handle EVs. Just my opinion. And then we have to talk about Ford. I know we talk about Tesla and Tesla being the best of the best, the competition is never going to come, etc. But we have to say that Ford will probably make it, right? New management, new way of thinking, being very, very transparent with the way they're operating right now. Unfortunately, right now, the numbers don't seem that great. But I do think that over time, things should improve. It's not going to be just smooth sailing. It's going to be a rocky ride. But they say here, well, Reuters says here, Ford sees $3 billion pre-tax loss in its EV business this year. Ford's project's Model E's cumulative three-year loss from 2021 to 2023 was at $6 billion, including a pro forma loss last year of $2.1 billion. But the company expects its first generation of EVs, including the F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mach-E, to be profitable on a pre-tax basis by the end of 2024. Now, Sawyer here did us a solid, but you can do this as well if you want to look at Ford's numbers. They're available on their website. But it basically says here, Ford revealed today that they lost $21,875 per EV delivery in 2022. He compares Tesla, they made $10,000 per EV delivery in 2022. Of course, you can't compare Tesla and Ford's EV business currently. That's just an unfair comparison. But if you want to see how big the par is, this is the reality today. Then, when it comes to the Inflation Reduction Act, so the tax credits, when it comes to the Model 3, so the entry-level Model 3, Tesla may use the $7,500 tax credit. We're going to have more information on that next week when, well, the US will release maybe more clarity surrounding this topic. 
So according to an internal memo obtained by Electric, Tesla expects this to happen because of the LFP lithium iron phosphate battery in the Model 3 rear wheel drive, which comes from China and not manufactured in North America. Now, while the Model 3 rear wheel drive is expected to lose the tax credit, all the remaining Model 3 and Model Y variants will continue to qualify as those batteries are assembled in the United States. This is according to Electric. Again, more news next week. And last couple of things here. I think a lot of people were waiting for this. So Tesla Europe said on Twitter, we've started rolling out Tesla Vision Park Assist utilizing vehicle cameras and our vision-based occupancy network to provide distance estimates to objects 360 degrees surrounding your Tesla. Of course, this was a feature that was, well, highly requested. And last thing here is the graph. So unlike last week, which we finished under the 20 and the 50 day moving average, this week was a much better week. Of course, we've had better days at the start of the week. Thursday, Friday wasn't that great, but still good enough to close on top of the 20 and the 50 day moving average. Still quite some way from the 200 day moving average, which right now sits at $210. MACD is still bullish, still under the zero. By the way, this is on the weekly chart. And the RSI hasn't moved that much, still in a pretty neutral area. And now really last thing, almost forgot this. So this is Ford's project T3, its next gen pickup, which should be coming in 2025. Of course, these are just now some sketches, but of course, many can put one and one together and say, hmm, maybe they are going towards a more cyber truck type of vehicle. It looks pretty futuristic to me. Obviously, these are just sketches. Concepts are great. Production is difficult. Let's wait and see what happens. And so that will be it for this week's Tesla weekly recap. Of course, we also had that 25 basis points rate hike from the Fed. I talked about that in another video, also covered the Hindenburg and Block short report. If you missed all of those things, those will be in the top right corner. Do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Have a great weekend. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.